Today we're going to be doing something out of my wheel, not out of my wheel, something a little bit different. We're doing the Greek inspired menu. I'm going to do some grilled baby lamb chops, some warm orzo salad. I'm going to do a Greek meatball with tzatziki, and we're going to do a stuffed tomato. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our beautiful lamb chops right here. I'm going to let them marinate real quick, and then I'm going to show you the meatball right after this. So basically, a little bit of olive oil, right? A little bit of fresh oregano. Now you can use dry oregano if you don't have fresh. I prefer to use fresh. If you can't dry, it's just fine. A little bit of garlic. Actually, a lot of garlic. We're gonna let those marinate a little bit, a little bit of salt. And we're gonna do a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of black pepper, which I don't have, and I'll find. All right, so we're gonna let these marinate for a little bit. Next, we're gonna start our orzo salad. Now, basically, all I'm gonna do ahead of time, a little al dente. Hey, can you have that trace for all the olives and stuff? All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of olive oil. Actually, we're going to do a lot of olive oil. Thank you. There's going to be a lot of ingredients in this, but I assure you, it's worth doing. So, basically, all we're going to do is a little bit of green bell pepper, a little bit of red bell pepper, some chopped tomato, some white beans. Now, this is real Greek-inspired, kind of Mediterranean-ish type of thing, but I assure you, it's absolutely fantastic. Some onion, some cucumber, and a little bit of um, capers. I'm also going to do some black Kalamata olives. And these bite and pitted. They're cheap enough nowadays. Very simple. Thank you very much. All right, so look, you're going to take your salad, mix it around a little. Like I said, the thing with this is you have a little bit of salt from the olives, you have a little bit of salt from the capers, so you want to be a little careful on the amount of salt. But we are definitely going to add some. So we're also going to add a little bit of, little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of salt. A little bit of black pepper. Oh, it's a fresh garlic. This is actually going to be really good. Since you have a big uh, platter over there, that food platter, the flat one, thank you. All right, so we're also going to add a little bit of vinegar to this. Now, I like using white vinegar. You can use red vinegar. You can use balsamic vinegar. You can use any vinegar you like. But I'm going to put that down. See, it's a little bit more olive oil. And don't be afraid. The thing when you cook, too, is taste everything. Don't be afraid not to taste, because you think you made it good. You can make it the same way every time, but I guarantee you it's going to come out different. So always kind of taste it. Get a couple of spoons. It needs a little bit of salt. Need a little bit of pepper. You always got to constantly adjust things. All right, so a little more garlic, a little more onion. Where did you get the pepper yet? Red, black, black pepper? Yeah. I'm going to do a little more black pepper. And vinegar. Is there a bottle of white vinegar right there? Thank you. My lovely assistant, my sister. Thank you. A little bit of white vinegar. You know what else we're going to do to kick this up a little bit? Check this out. We're going to get some crumbled feta in there. Now this is very similar. This is very similar to like a pasta salad. Like the, you know, we do it at summertime with the broccoli and the red peppers and the olives. This is slightly more Greek style with the feta and the black olives. Let's see. Look how beautiful that is. That is unbelievable. I assure you this is going to be fantastic. But they just a pinch more vinegar. And then we're going to get our lamb chops going. Check this out. Let's see if we can do this. Wow. Oh, yeah. We're going to put our lamb chops around this in a minute. Guys, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Mm, yeah. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. <laughs> yum, yum. These are all nuts, but I love it. All right. Beautiful. You know what we're going to do, too? Can you take that? Thank you. We're going to add a little bit of more. Crumbled feta right on top. All right, we're gonna take a two second break. We're gonna come back, I'm gonna show you how to do the lamb chops and the Greek inspired meatballs. We'll see you in a couple of seconds. All right, welcome back to Sunday dinner with Chef Clemenza. As you can see, we're all chilling. We need some wine. Can somebody break out some wine, a couple of glasses of wine, maybe somebody, anybody? As you can see, I'm relaxed, I'm hanging out, my t-shirt, my shorts. It's all about just chilling out and having some fun. So, I told you we're gonna do some meatballs. Now, I'm not gonna do an Italian meatball. Most of you know about my meatball Sunday that I do on the food truck. Culinary Carnival, we do a lot of festivals and things like that. But we're gonna do a little Greek inspired meatball and we're gonna do some great flavors in here. So, got a pound of ground beef. I'm gonna do a little bit of chopped garlic. I'm gonna do a little bit of grated cheese. So we got our ground beef, we got the grated cheese. We have the crushed garlic. We're gonna do a little bit of crushed feta in here, which is gonna give it a kind of little pungent, beautiful taste. We're gonna do a little bit of oregano, a little bit of garlic powder, and a little bit of salt and pepper. And then of course an egg. So when you make meatballs, Basically, the ratio is 
I do a pound of chopped meat to one egg. Now people put two eggs. Look, whatever floats your boat, it's your balls. I don't care what you're doing. So, <laughs> that's all you get. so, a little bit of garlic powder. And again, this is something you can't taste. But believe it or not, we were kids. My mother would make the meatball mix, and all of us would come over and pick at it and eat it like that. And it tasted friggin' fantastic. We're also going to do a little fresh chopped parsley in here, which we have a beautiful little array of herbs. And we're just going to rip off a little bunch. And I'm going to show you guys a little trick. So, when you chop parsley, look, just kind of roll it. So you want to get in on the shot a little bit, just kind of roll it like that. Now watch how easy this is going to be. Done. There you go. Actually, you know what? Look at that. Beautiful. Ooh, That's nice. a beautiful thing. Nice. 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 Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, Wait, you, you. you <laughs> All right. Can somebody get a, you got wine, you got wine. Yeah, it's wine. him, look at it. Come on, let's get a little <laughs> glass of wine. Come on, let's have some wine. Did you steal my egg? <laughs> I think you stole my egg. <clears throat> All right, and one egg. One egg. What's your egg happen to be a little bit of froth? Now check this out. Most people say, look, when you're at home, don't be afraid to get your hands wet. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. My hands are clean. I'm gonna wash my hands again a couple more times. But you really want to get in here and kind of mix it up. And kind of make sure everything is kind of blended together. Now, of course, if I was in the restaurant, I'd have to have on a pair of gloves. But I'm home, and I'm with my family. So this is what I do. Nice, you know what, just get a little cup of breadcrumb over there. Right in the cup. Yep, add some breadcrumb to this. Then, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's okay, though. You know what, that was actually perfect. Yeah. I had a yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the white one? You want white one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Maybe it's me. Man. I don't know. But this is what we do. So, all right. JP, you know what I'm going to do? What and I thought of you, and I don't know, I don't know if you're going to do this or not, but we got JP in the house, by the way. Former <laughs> guy in Papa Peroni Rice Balls. Let me tell you, there's no better taste than bowls than his. They're fantastic. <laughs> They're absolutely beautiful. That's what my wife says. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to do a stuffed tomato. Oh, I used to do that all the time. Now uh, so you do it. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. When I get to the stuffed tomato, Big Shot, you're going to come up here. and I'll show you how to make a stuffed tomato. show me how to make a stuffed all right. tomato. And you know what? Why don't you come back next week and do your bowls? 100%. All right, we can I do can a do bunch that. of bowls. Ah, look at that. Finally, a glass of friend wine. Alright, we're going to roll these up real quick. Now look, the thing with meatballs too is you don't want to overcrowd the pan. You don't want to make them really too big. You want to make them so they're going to kind of cook through a little bit. Actually, they're going to go a little bit small so they cook faster. Alright, tell you what, we're going to roll our balls. We'll be back in a few minutes. I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes. A little Greek inspired meatballs. Let's get rid of this thing because that's just not going to work. All right, so we got a little olive oil. We're going to let that get hot for a minute. We're going to throw in, when I fry any meatballs, believe it or not, is I like chopping up just a little bit of garlic and frying a little bit of, I love burnt garlic too, man. I don't know what it is. It's weird. I know it's crazy, but fried garlic in anything, it's just unbelievable. So we're going to add a little bit of fried garlic. We're going to get our meatballs going. We're going to do our stuffed tomato in a minute. We're gonna get our boy over there, JP, Johnny Balls, Papa Peroni, Phyllis Della, Tubby the Doob. <laughs> whatever you wanna call it. Whatever you wanna call it. Whatever you wanna call it. guy. Let's get our meatball. Meatballs are gonna take a second to get hot. All right, so we're gonna get a little parsley too. We're gonna get some parsley going for some garnish on this. And we're gonna start out tzatziki sauce. So tzatziki is basically or traditionally done with either sour cream or yogurt. Now I don't, I think I don't like yogurt or Greek yogurt is really good. But I don't like the tzatziki made from yogurt. All right, so I'm gonna do some sour cream, and I'm gonna do some chopped up dill, some shredded cucumber, a couple of different things. That's gonna be the sauce for the meatballs. Just give me all this stuff over there. Right there, that, yep. And the sour cream, beautiful. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get our tzatziki started. Our meatballs are going, guys. Thank you for coming, everybody. Here's the thing, guys, we're cooking at home. We're on a countertop, we're on three camping stoves, we got a room full of maniacs, including myself, and this is what it is, and this is what we do, memories, and having fun, 
and having family over and eating good food and drinking some wine and whatever it is you know. Oh, that's good friggin' wine. You want to get the sour cream on both of me? Right there? Just that, that you can dump right in here, look, watch. Boom, magic. <laughs> well, I didn't know if I could dump the whole thing. You dump the whole thing, that up. You gotta get a little spoon, get the rest of it out. We're gonna get our meatballs going. Yeah. Yum, yum. Now, this is actually the first time I'm doing this with like feta cheese and Greek inspired. I was gonna put a little black olive, but you know, the salt is already through the roof, so we're trying to be a little bit good. Not much, but a little bit. Now, I said don't overcrowd the pan, and that's what I'm doing. But hey, it's my show, my stove, so I do what I want. Hey. But, hey. <laughs> All right, so we got our meatballs frying. Once these are cooked, like I said, I'm going to do a beautiful tzatziki. I'm going to use some sour cream. I'm going to put in some dill, some grated cucumber. Now, the trick with the cucumber, too, guys, is when you grate it, cucumbers are like water. It's full of water. So you want to kind of like pat it out a little bit. So can I get some paper towels when you get a chance? All right, so look. Check it out. Sour cream. Fresh chopped dill. I know it doesn't go, but I like it. I'm going to do a tad bit of red onion, some garlic. Beautiful. Can I get some feta in that little bowl of feta right there? A little bit of feta. Oh, this is going to be amazing, I'm telling you. A little bit of cucumber grated, which we're going to do right now. We're going to grate a little bit of cucumber. If I have a cheese grater, beautiful. Since you want to get this mixing around, I'm going to flip the meatballs. Wow, look at this. Woo. All right. So we're gonna start our lamb chops too in a couple minutes. Anybody got any questions about anything? Something? Anything? Somebody talk to me. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? It smells it good. good. It does smell good. It smells good. Looks good. Yeah. All right. So these are gonna be done in a few minutes. We're gonna grill off our lamb chops next. They're gonna go around that platter. Absolutely gonna be beautiful. These are almost done. Look at that. So get a close up of that. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is freaking beautiful. Nice. All right. So we're gonna get. So you know what? We're gonna go a little more. We're gonna mix it up a little more. We're gonna a little more feta in there, make it a little more creamier. We're gonna get our grated cucumber, skin and all. Very simple. Just right on the grater, and that's the whole trick to the tzatziki. Now, like I said, I like sour cream. You can actually, you can do both. You can do either or. You can mix them together. Whatever it does it for you, man. If that's what works, go for it. And also be very careful on this thing. Beautiful. All right. Let's get rid of this. Yeah, right over there. Okay. See, look at all the look at the amount of water that comes out of this. Yeah. You have another paper towel? Right here. Okay. Beautiful. That is an easier way to do this. You probably put it in a strainer and press down on it, but like I said, Ooh. I'm in a t-shirt, I'm in my house, I'm relaxing. It ain't even all about that. Look at this. But I want to give you guys the visual too. About all the water. Like if you were to put this in, you would have a pile of water. You ready? Mm -hmm. Boom. All right, our tzatziki sauce is almost done. Our meatballs are almost ready. We're going to take a two-minute break, and we'll be right back with Sunday dinner with Chef Clemenza. Yay! Yay! We're back. Our balls are ready. Our tzatziki's ready. We're going to get ready. Speaking of balls, we're going to get ready to bring up Johnny Balls after this. You're going to stuff my tomatoes. I'm going to stuff the tomatoes. Right, I'm going to make the, the rice tomatoes. balls. I'm going to do it all for you. Don't worry, I got your back. I got them. Guys, next week, let me tell you something. In all seriousness, this guy's rice balls are probably one of the best things I've ever tasted in life. His spinach ball is just ridiculous. I don't like buffalo chicken on pizza. It's just, I'm Italian. It's not my thing. However, his buffalo chicken rice ball is fantastic. We're going to do that for you guys next show with a little eggplant rollatini and a couple of little surprises we're going to do for you. All right, so the reason why I do this too, guys, always when you fry anything, anything, put a paper towel down. You want to absorb the grease. Since you got one more plate by any chance, just like this? Thing? Yeah? No? Maybe? Yes. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> Alright, so we got our balls done. We're going to plate this up in a minute. Coming through hot. Can you grab that? It's not hot really, but it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. There you go. Alright, so. Here we go. Get ready for this. We're going to fry our hands on the but check this out. Ready for this? This is going to be unbelievable. You guys, actually we can pass this around and we can all taste a little lamb ball. Beautiful. A little tzatziki. Look at that. And we're going to finish this with a little bit of oregano. Some parsley. And a little bit of olives on top. There we go. Check that out. That's a beautiful dish right there. We're going to put the rest of these on there. Boom. Look at that. 
meatballs are done. We're gonna pass the meatballs around. So many people, you wanna grab these? Yeah, absolutely. Little yeah. horses with the motion, right there. We're gonna get our lamb chops go. So basically, what I did with the lamb chops is I, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of oregano, a little salt, a little bit of pepper. Like I said earlier, we're gonna add a little bit more garlic powder, and that's about it. We got our pans getting hot. Mm. Now the trick too is. When you guys sear something, the technique is called searing. So you want a really, really hot, hot, super hot pan. Now, as you can see, these lamb chops are absolutely beautiful, but they're not very thick, so they're going to cook quick. So basically, when, like I said, when you sear something, you want to hit it with a hot flame, just get that nice sear on it, flip it over, done, medium, and that's okay. The dog's bucking. We love Louie. Louie's allowed to buck on my show. He wants a lamb chop ball. <laughs> he does. He wants a lamb chop. Let's hear that sizzle. Look at that. Wow, the beautiful thing, since you got a pair of tongues. Now, oddly enough, lamb chops are very expensive. And man, I went there, nobody had lamb chops. It was off. I paid fifteen dollars a pound for three lamb chops. They're out of their minds. But anyway, that's another story. Look at that. We're starting to get nice color. The trick too is you don't do what I'm doing and move them around. You kind of want to just let it sit. And see it. We're gonna get our other pan going. All right, we're gonna bring on JP. Yeah. We're gonna start stuffing some tomatoes. We got our lamb chops going. Yeah, no, we don't care. Yeah, it's gotta be good. And we're gonna come back in two seconds. We're gonna plate up some lamb chops. I know I'm taking a lot of breaks, but like you said, guys, it's just not about. It's just more about getting together, bringing people together, putting smiles on people's faces. Somebody stole my wine. Oh my god. And where's <laughs> my wine? Drinking some wine, hanging out. And that's it, man. It's, it's making memories. You know, this is something you're gonna remember for the rest of your life. And if you do a show or a YouTube video or a Facebook video, that's gonna be out there for as long as the internet exists. And you can always go back and look. You know, it, it's been a tough time throughout all this. I myself have lost an aunt, an uncle, and a brother in the past year. So you don't know who's gonna be around, man. So take advantage of it now. Listen to what I'm telling you. While you can, you know, make it a point to go see your mom, your cousin, your aunt. Get together, do some dinner, do some food. And by the way, look at that beautiful sear and that friggin' lamb chop. We're gonna finish these off. We'll be back in a few seconds to do our stuff to manage with Johnny, JP, Paul, Gregory, whatever. Alright, we're back. Check this out, guys. We're gonna finish this dish with some beautiful grilled baby lamb chops. And we have another cut of lamb right here, which is the Almost like a T-bone, but not really. I don't know. It's, it, there was no lamb in the market. It was bizarre. But look, here's the thing, too, when you guys cook. you got to learn to improvise. You know, I know things are traditional. I'm talking with a lamb chop. <laughs> I know things are a little bit traditional. And, you know, I, I get it. But look, sometimes you got to learn to improvise, especially in a restaurant. You know, when you're in the moment, you're cooking, you got 100 people, 200 people in your dining room. And something goes wrong, you need to go on the fly and do whatever you can to get that food out and make sure it's absolutely delicious. So check that out. Mm. Isn't that a beautiful thing, guys? Look at that. Yeah. 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 We're going to sit down and eat this in a little bit. We're going to get our boy up here, Johnny Falls, and we're going to start doing some stuffed tomatoes. John, bring the tomatoes. Look at that. That's amazing right there. Beautiful. We're going to bring on JP, John Paul, Papa Peroni, King of the Rice Balls. Here he is. We're going to put some stuff yeah. in Tomatoes, what I like to do is I like to get a little cut on the top. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna take the spoon, you're gonna, you're gonna go nice shape. and easy, but nice and All right. easy. Alright, and then what do you do with the remaining pulp? What I know you're what gonna I do with the remaining is you're gonna take the sausage, like what I normally do is right. I take sausage and I saute the sausage, and then I'll put all this together with the sausage and with the grated cheese and then uh, yeah, the bread crumb. And when I do all that, it becomes a, a, a mixture. Like a so stuffing. Then we, a stuffing, correct. So you're going to stuff your balls. So then what we're going to do is we're going to stuff the tomatoes. You're stuff your tomatoes. And, stuff your tomatoes. And, and then when we stuff the tomatoes, we're going to put I, them in the oven. So again, I'm going nice to do a little twist on your variation. I got a little bit of onion and garlic, right? Okay. We're going to get that. It's actually really hot. We're going to get that going with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. All right, now we're gonna, almost like, almost like making a modern art sauce. It's like the pulp with a tomato. Correct. So we're gonna make a little sauce. We're just gonna thicken it up. It's the breadcrumb. The breadcrumb, we're gonna have a sip of wine real quick. The breadcrumb, the cumin seed down, and the grated cheese. I'm gonna do a little smoke and put it out. Check these little guys out, man. Isn't that yeah, amazing? They look nice. Those are beautiful nice. balls. Hold up. Yeah, I have them. Hold up. 
I know, but you know what? This is hard to get. Nobody, years ago when I was a kid with me, I don't smoke much of that. It was one of the very common, hard to see. It's, you know, people, uh, you know, people don't realize what you're missing out on. It's a beautiful yeah, tradition and things. Stuff. I ate this all the time when I was a kid. No, no. Alright, so. So now with we the got sausage, you're gonna, you're gonna saute the sauce. Sausage is already there. Yeah. It's so it pretty in, much yeah. pre-cooked. Yeah, alright. We got a little, I'm using hot sausage nice. too. Then we're gonna pour this in. Let's give this a little, 10 seconds. It's already cooked, so no big deal. You can show your tomatoes in. So now you want to get that all mixed up nice and nice. A little bit of onion, a little bit of garlic. You kind of want to cook it down a little bit so you get some of the water out, but not too much because the, the bread crumb needs something to absorb. Yeah, yeah, we're going to add a little bit of grated cheese to that to get it going. We're going to chop out smoked muds. I bet you I can move faster than a parent. Wow. Fingers and you don't. They call them stumps. <laughs> <laughs> there all right, we go. Yeah, because now that's getting all the yep, flavor. You want to get the so bread from it? Yep. The, yep. the grated yep. cheese. I mean the uh, the bread from. Add a little bit of bread from, from a little smoke muds. Big it. That guy's done by. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and nice. Now he's all quiet. All right. Look at that. We're gonna let this cook down a little bit. I think a little more bread from. Yes, definitely. A little more grated cheese too. We're gonna go a little oregano. We want it to be a little thick. A little bit. A little what? Well, okay. Dick. Dick. It's a family show. What's going on over here? Okay, let me see what I can do. All right, some granulated garlic. We're gonna do a little bit of granulated onion. You know what? Let's add a little bit of olive oil to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. There we go. Nice. Nice. Let me get a bite. Yeah, baby. All right. And we're gonna show you how to stuff the tomato, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. All right. JP, Papa Peroni, King of the Rice Ball guy over here. Balls. Balls. We're gonna start stuffing your balls. Now, Liz, years ago, I had a podcast called Chewing the Fat with Big and Beefy. And my boy Rob Burmeister, a.k.a. he was on um, Chopped and Cutthroat Kitchen and a bunch of shows. Him and I did this podcast together. And he came on as our guest. He brought us a tray of rice balls. And him and I have been friends ever since. Hmm. Once I tasted his balls, it was all over. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. But seriously, now, what are you doing? Tell you, explain so basically, you when you want to stuff it, you just want to get it nice and nice. You want to get it all the way to the bottom. So you have it. Now, can I do something? Can I show you yeah, something? Yeah, show me. I'm show you now. I just want to Absolutely. Absolutely. Little trick. Please. What I like to do is just a little olive oil, right? So the juices pull up when you bake yep. it. Oh, yeah, and then a little salt and pepper, so the tomato has a little bit of flavor. That's why you're Chef Clemenza. That's why you're Johnny Wolf. That's why we collaborate. Him and I make a good team. Nice. That's Good. really nice. Now we're going to finish stuffing them. Right. So now what you want to do is when you do stuff it, you just want to make sure you get it down to the bottom and get it in. You know what yeah, I mean? Don't be afraid to pack it in there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying over here with this kid? Listen, you've been away a long time. I don't know if you heard. I don't do that no more. <laughs> All right. So, see, with the smoked mozzarella, it's a little different than what I normally do. You know, I so saw, here's the thing. I saw the smoked mozzarella, and they just looked so beautiful and nice and firm. And I squeezed them, and they were fantastic. And, you know, it works. I think it absolutely works. But the difference, what I do... What when I do the sausage, I do it with the sausage, the inside of the tomato, I do it with the grated cheese, and then the breadcrumbs. So now you don't have the cheese going all so over So basically, like you did everything I did except I added the smoke mix it out. No, 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 no. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is so the cheese is a little throwing me off, but I like the, I like the texture. It's the, the same thing, thing, but a little smoke mix. A little smoke mix. All right. I'm a little crazy over here, you know what I mean? I'll smoke some mix. Let's go. <laughs> all right. We see, got now also tomatoes. what you want to do, you see the way we have some extra... Uh, filling, you want to put it around so that they, they don't start falling over in the in the uh, in the oven. In the oven, in the oven. In the oven. Done now another it. thing is Johnny two times. You wanna you want to put tin foil over it so that the tomatoes they get a little they more get a little steam. They're gonna they get a little steam. right. So they get a mushad. Nice. Absolutely. All right, we're gonna finish these tomatoes. We're gonna put them in the oven. We're gonna roast them off. We're gonna come right back and we're all gonna sit down. And we're gonna eat our lamb chops, our orzo salad. All this delicious. Get a shot of this little focaccia bread over here that our boy JP brought. Beautiful focaccia Ooh, bread oh, straight yeah. out of Brooklyn. That is unbelievable. Yeah, Brooklyn bread. There we go. We got everything. We'll be back. We're coming back for dinner. Yeah. We'll right back. Yeah. All right, we're back. We're finished. We're gonna about to eat dinner. On the real, I want to thank all my friends and family for coming Ooh. by. Yeah. This is what it's all about right here, guys. This is going to create memories. You're going to eat like you never eat before. We got the beautiful tomatoes, the lamb chops. Johnny JP over there brought us some beautiful focaccia bread. 
Before we end, I just want to say thank everybody and say thank you, God, for this food. God bless. Let's take it, guys. Come on. And remember, this is what it's all about. Sunday dinner with Chef Clemente.